There was a time in Hollywood's past when the single most essential asset one needed to be a genuine movie star was a near-perfect profile. The thinking was then that when people went to the movies, they wanted to see the equivalent of gods and goddesses. As Joan Crawford once said, if people want to see the boy or girl next door, they can go next door. That's not why they go to the movies. But even in that bygone era when Hollywood was wall to wall with people who looked as if they'd been born on Mount Olympus, two men stood out. Jerome Power was one. The other was MGM's favorite Adonis, TCM Star of the Month this April, Robert Taylor. You don't want me to take you home and you know it. Of course I don't want you to take me home. It was Robert Taylor's face which made him famous. Because of it, sometimes in spite of it, he stayed a major leaguer for over four decades. So this April, we're going to give you many reasons to see that face, but also the chance to enjoy the other qualities which made him such a popular favorite for so many years. Every Tuesday, we'll feature 24 hours of Robert Taylor in movies beginning on April 6th with one of his earliest films, A Wicked Woman. You want to be a hero, huh? Dash around saving little sisters and all that sort of thing. You've got plenty coming to you. I figure it's my job to give it to you. We'll follow that with the TCM premiere of a film that first made him a bona fide star, the 1935 version of Magnificent Obsession with Irene Dunn. It's not going to take more than a look to understand why Bob Taylor became a star. That evening, we'll also show you the movie that Taylor himself said was his favorite among all those movies he made. It's Waterloo Bridge from 1940, co-starring in her first movie after Gone with the Wind, Vivian Lee. I thought about you all last night. Couldn't sleep a wink. You managed to remember me at last, then. <laughs> yes, barely managed. Since we're talking favorites, on April 13th, TCM will bring you one of my favorite Robert Taylor movies, 1942's Johnny Eager with Lana Turner, a movie in which Taylor was very good at being very bad. Get out. I don't want to mess up the cushions. Well, I found out what I wanted to know. Now you know. I'll bet you could use these, Lou. We're back on April 20th with another Taylor film worth noting. It's one which helped seal his reputation as the 1950s king of the movie epics, 1952's Ivanhoe with Elizabeth Taylor. I love you, and I must not feel it. And yet I love you, Ivanhoe. And if you'll stay with us through the evening, be sure to check out Westward the Women, another film released in 1952 and another of the great underappreciated westerns from Hollywood's past. These are women, good women, great women. Just make sure you're men enough for them. Make sure you treat them right, because God help you if you don't. We'll wrap up our tribute to Robert Taylor on April 27th with several more chances to see the man with the million-dollar profile, three comrades and party girl, just to name a few. I loved working with Robert Taylor. Taylor was never any further than 10 feet away from the camera. He had his little director's chair and he had a, a thermos of coffee and his script. He was always studying it. Do plan to spend Tuesdays with Robert Taylor on TCM and be sure to visit TCM.com for the complete list of all the Robert Taylor movies we'll be showing this month.